Hello everybody, it's me, and I've received countless questions about what the crap is living in my fish tank on some of my videos. Um, in case you guys were wondering, uh, I have actually featured her quite a bit on my Snapchat story, but um, the amount of interest has allowed me to do a thing which I've actually wanted to do for a really long time, which is make a little informational video about what exactly this creature is. And uh, so yeah, this video is going to be informational about Greater Sirens, um, which is a type of salamander. It's fully aquatic, and we're going to go into a whole bunch of detail about that. Um, and while I'm talking, you get to watch this awesome, rather soothing, I think, video of Nessie. Uh, I call her Nessie for short. Um, just kind of swimming around and hunting. Uh, I was able to coax her out of sleep during the day by feeding her in the afternoon as opposed to in the evening. So here we go. Uh, I guess a little bit of background on Nessie herself. Uh, she's actually about three years old. I got her in April of 2015. So she's almost three, or technically is three when I got her. She was very, very small, at most maybe six inches long. Um, and she was just, she was so tiny. She came to me, at, I actually got her through the mail. She was a gift from an ex. And she came to me in this tiny little circular tub uh, with a little bit of water and a plant inside in the mail and I thought that was crazy that they send these creatures in the mail um, but I received her and instantly put her in the tank that she's in now. Once we move into a uh, more stationary location like a house I'll actually be getting her a 150 to 200 gallon tank where I have a feeling she'll have room to grow and be a lot happier but for now this is where she is in this smaller tank. It's a 55 gallon tank which is pushing it a little bit for a greater siren, but uh, she doesn't seem to mind too much, especially since I keep it very clean. Um, so you may be wondering, what is a greater siren? And it's, it's a large eel-like salamander with two forelimbs, um, which are her little hands, um, and then some external gills, and then they've got a flattened tail. And so when you see a, a profile photo of her, um, I believe it's called a por profile, or like a portrait, of her face. There are these two little things that stick out on the side just above her feet and those are external gills. At her full length she could be up to a full meter um, but most adults really don't make it past 70 centimeters in total length. Coloration always varies um, but they're generally in olive green or grayish color and they almost always have those yellow or green little spots along their sides. I have a feeling she's going to be one of the smaller greater sirens because during her youth she's living in a smaller environment, um, but you can differentiate the smaller greater sirens from what another type called the lesser siren by counting the number of grooves that they have on their sides. Uh, and uh, greater sirens usually have anywhere between 36 to 40 grooves. And if you were to see an up-close picture of her, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. You can also look it up on the internet. Uh, they're really cool to see. I don't know. It's exciting to me. They are found along the Atlantic and Gulf coastal plains from as far north as Virginia, all the way south through Florida and west into parts of eastern Alabama. Some populations of them live in southern Texas and Mexico along the Rio Grande, but it's not really like officially proven because this creature is really hard to find. They they live in tiny little, well, they live in like little swamp areas or shallow rivers that don't have too much water flow, so they're really hard to find, you know? They, they're just like muddy little creatures. They live in the mud and so they kind of blend in and I think that's why it's so difficult to find them as well as like identify them officially. So like the ones in the Rio Grande, they actually, people aren't officially sure if those are greater sirens or a different variety of salamander. But they use a wide variety of wetlands, uh, but are found most often in slow or still bodies of water that are heavily vegetated with a thick layer of organic muck or mud. And because of their ability to estivate for years at a time, uh, they can live and thrive in seasonal wetlands, basically. So when their water source dries out, 
they actually cocoon themselves in a casing of mud and their own slime basically and uh, I think the longest living one that lived I guess like the one that lived the longest in that state in a lab was uh, 5.2 years so that's a really long time to be I guess like what would you even call that hibernating almost um, so yeah they can they can survive through droughts basically for up to five years their breeding activity has been observed in February and March, so that's usually when they fertilize their eggs, and nobody's actually officially documented how they reproduce, but people, scientists presume that their fertilization is presumed to be external. I find that interesting because there are actually breeders all across the United States that breed these guys, and nobody's been officially able to document how the breeding takes place. So that's kind of unique, I think. Greater sirens also occasionally give off a yelping sound when handled. I've never had that happen where she where she yelped, but she does come up to the surface of the water and kind of gulp some of the air up there, and uh, she makes a squeaking sound then, so it's kind of cute, I think. Uh, if you've ever heard of mud puppies, it's very similar to that. They also supposedly have made like clicking sounds, uh, and you know, so that could play a factor also maybe in their hunting or their communication with other sirens. So what I feed her right now is a lot of like shrimp, freeze-dried shrimp usually, but I'm actually going to try to get her on minnows. And the reason she's been on freeze-dried food for so long is because she's terrified of worms and she won't eat them chopped up either. And I hadn't heard of feeding them minnows before, but I have a feeling she might actually really like them. And if she doesn't like them, at least she'll have little companions in her tank. But speaking of living in the tank, captives can live up to 25 years, but no longevity f information for wild animals is available. The greater siren is considered common, but is patchily distributed along the periphery of its range. There's not much data available for the population status of the greater siren um, because they're so oddly spaced and hard to find. Oh, another thing that I, I mentioned a little bit earlier is that they're actually nocturnal creatures. They usually actually bury themselves in the mud or under intense vegetation during the evening or during the daytimes and then at night is when they start to hunt. Um, they can be very active as pets though and it's actually kind of fun uh, to watch her swim around, especially it's something that I have noticed as soon as the sun starts to go down she becomes a lot more active, uh, so that's cool. And uh, a lot of people when they keep greater sirens they try to use like the excuse of well they live in mucky swamps and stuff so I don't have to clean the tank as often, which while your greater siren will survive just fine, um, the, you do run the risk of causing infections and fungal uh, problems in the future with your creature because the water here that we put into our tanks is not nearly as filtered and um, not necessarily clean but it doesn't have the right bacteria cultures uh, or the same bacteria cultures as those in the wild so that's that's a huge thing too like you have to be careful of what type of bacterial culture you've got going on as well as the pH balance of your water so it's important to keep the water clean and clear um, and around 75 degrees in temperature but higher or lower uh, a little bit higher or a little bit lower than that is just fine I re I've read a lot that on tanks for these guys you should have like a really secure top because sirens try to leave their tank at night they try to jump out I've actually never had that happen before. She has remained very, very comfortably in her tank, so that's not really something that I worry about, but when I get the bigger tank, I know for a fact that with the increased amount of space, she's going to grow, and at that point in time, I will definitely get a top that I can secure with grips or something of that sort, like clamps. Um, their typical diet in captivity uh, is carnivorous, although they do often eat plants, and I think that's just something that many salamanders will do, is occasionally they'll see something and they'll think, hmm, maybe this is tasty and they'll take a bite. Algae has actually been found in the digestive tract of these guys, uh, so it, it's been 
leading scientists to believe that actually they do have a diet that includes greens like algae and other plants. Um, but usually they eat nightcrawlers, small fish like crayfish or minnows, insects, and even like with the bigger, greater sirens, the older ones, they even eat like pinky mice and pieces. I've heard of people feeding their creatures like steak and stuff. It's crazy. So I've been able to find a little bit more information about their reproduction. And according to one website, supposedly up to 500 eggs are actually deposited between February and March, singly or in small clusters on the pond bottom in densely vegetated sites. And then there's some evidence that females actually guard their eggs, but there's not like, there's still like no 100% on how they're fertil fertilized. These creatures are very, almost prehistoric. They have just a lot of really interesting things about them that not a lot of other creatures do. Um, they literally are really like fish, but also like amphibians. Um, and I feel like this is, they're almost like that link between, uh, that ev evolutionary link between like sea creature to land creature sort of thing. And I, I honestly can't tell you jack squat about evolution, but they just remind me of like the true the OG dinosaurs, if that makes sense. Um, they, they're just so unique. The fact that they can create a cocoon around themselves to survive through droughts, that they've got external gills, uh, and they also have lungs and can gulp air. They, they have these front legs, but the front legs don't do anything. Like, they're just so unique to me. Uh, and they're so unique that some scientists even believe that these guys are a separate class uh, of salamander altogether, if not even not salamanders. They might even be a creature of their own. They've even been excluded in certain uh, areas of the world from the salamander grouping and put in their own new sort of like amphibian group. And it's often actually termed Trachystomata or mantis. And it's just because they're so strange. They're fully aquatic, they look like eels, uh, they lack a pelvis and hind limbs, but they, and they possess external gills, lungs, they lack eyelids, and they can burrow into mud, and they can get really fucking long, really fucking thick. And they've actually got an ancestor um, the Cretace from the Cretaceous... Paleocene era called Habrosaurus, which it literally just looks exactly like them, 100% exactly like them, um, that actually reached 1.6 meters long. It's, it's so crazy. And they literally, I'm telling you guys, this is what I was talking about them being pre prehistoric, like they look exactly like the Greater Siren. Um, and the funny thing is that, like, over time, sirens really have gotten consistently smaller since the Cretaceous. Each time they evolve, they change in size, they gain legs or lose gills. It's really unique. Really, really unique. They also, oh, I didn't even mention, um, they have some weird mandibles. Um, they have beaks and teeth. And it's actually how you can tell the difference between the male and the female. Um, males actually have bigger heads and uh, females not so much. They have a horny beak uh, and pavements of teeth on the palate. So it's like they've got like, just their palate is all teeth. It's very, very unique. The beak forms like a broad platform inside the jaws and then the, the jaw joint is displaced relative to the rest of the skull, so it's pushed forward a little bit. Um, and basically it just helps them with like crushing their food. Uh, I actually read a story about a guy who feeds his uh, siren shrimp, and he, the way that they eat the shrimp basically is they suck the meat out from the shell of the shrimp. Like, it's just, really, really cool. So I've, I've been able to find, on Scientific American, I actually did a little bit more research on their reproduction, um, and there was a study done on these guys during their mating 
and so the male builds the nest and then in the nest site the male and female actually have like these ritualized behaviors like circling um, he pursues her they do flank rubbing and tail undulation and head rubbing um, and this continues for about two hours and then culminates in the female turning on her back and discharging approximately 130 tiny eggs into the nest substrate which is usually moss and then the male also inverts and fertilizes the eggs, so it proves that sirens do practice external fertilization. Then the male guards the nest. He drives any intruding individuals away, fans the eggs with his tail, frequently moves the egg mass to keep the area clean, and once the eggs hatch, the male defends the larvae, even though both the male and the larvae leave the nest on occasion before returning it to it. Um, the baby guarding continues for about a week after hatching, and the females actually have been noted to occasionally eat their own eggs. That is a thing. So yeah, that's kind of just my little information dump about greater sirens. Um, these guys are awesome. They're super fun to have as pets, uh, relatively easy care, and they're just they're really cute and and it's cool you know all the little things about them like she's legitimately a dinosaur the only difference between her and her ancestors is her size she's not as massive as them but everything else is the same the eating is the same uh, the diet excuse me is the same and the biology is the same so it's just it's a lot of fun. It's super cool. Um, if you guys are curious about these guys or any other type of salamander or amphibious creature, I recommend going to kadada.org and I'll put a link to that down below. Also Scientific American. Those are both really good sites to go to if you have any questions regarding salamanders or how to take care of them if you have them in captivity um, or even breeding if that's a thing that you're into. So yeah, if you like what you saw today and you want to see more or you want to see something different, um, hit that button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Jackalope Tribe and earn your antlers. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. All the links are at the end of the video. And don't forget to like and share with your friends. And uh, feel free to leave comments and even send me pictures of your own salamanders that you have. Um, I am a huge fan of creatures of all shapes, sizes, and backgrounds, so I'd love to see what you got. Thank you all so much and have a spectacular week.